So, hi, good evening, everyone. <clears throat> Very warm welcome for joining our Facebook live session this lovely Saturday. So before we proceed, I would like to introduce myself. My, uh, my name is Ryan from Bagan Specialist Center Marketing Team, and I'll be your host for today's program. So today I'm glad to have uh, Dr. Lo with us. Uh, he will share the topic of three tips of prevent flare of uh, enzyme and skin infection. So Dr. Lo is the uh, dermatologist of our hospital. Yeah, so in this hour, uh, if you guys have, have any question to ask uh, our doctor, please feel free to raise the question in the Facebook post column. So without further ado, we kick off this program right now. So please allow me to welcome Dr. Lo. Over to you, over to you right now, Dr. Lo. Thank you. Uh, sorry, Dr. You have to, yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Ryan Tan. Okay, so um Thank you for the kind introduction as well. So today, my topic for this webinar is actually three tips to prevent flare of eczema and also common skin infections. So um, um, before I begin, I would like to thank Bagan Service Specialist for actually uh, giving me this opportunity to share this uh, knowledge to the public, as well as thank you, uh, Whole Pharmaceutical, for actually uh, uh, arranging this talk together with Bagan Special Center, and they actually uh, plan to give goodies bags to the uh, uh, audience listening now. And for those who actually share to other groups, share to your friends and relative members, you are welcome to do so because at the end of the day, uh, the top sharer might get a goodies bag, which uh, with all the moisturizer in the goodies bag. Okay, so without further ado, I would like to start on my topics today. I will start with part one first. Part one is actually uh, eczema part. So as we can see in this uh, uh, webinar and this photo, we can see that eczema actually affecting not just the baby. Okay, it also affect adults, for example, this, this leg, also affect uh, adolescents, even teenagers. So um, it's actually a disease not uh, affecting everyone. It can actually affect uh, any part of the skin, despite the fact that uh, it actually can present commonly. For example, when the kids have the eczema, normally they will start with the face or the extensor of their uh, upper limbs and lower limbs. But as they uh, progressed into teenagers, adulthood, elderly, they might present over the uh, extensor uh, flexural surface, but of course there are also other areas which is commonly uh, presented. So if you look at this photo alone, you can see that uh, eczema actually presented with many signs, meaning it can present acutely like this, in which you can see it's like a very uh, red patches with small, small papules and vesicles. Some may have some oozing uh, serious discharge and some might have a secondary bacterial infection, uh, evidenced by the crusting of these skin lesions. Of course, they might actually present like this, very dry, very thicken, and very leathery, uh, leathery look of the skin. Not to forget uh, about, uh, they might actually present with hand and feet eczema. Okay. So next, uh, I would like to want to share the first tip, which is the most important tips in my topics today. And this concept actually quite, uh, quite, quite, uh, important to understand because uh, if you understand these bricks and mortar theories, you can actually uh, know how to actually uh, prevent the eczema from happening. So first, let us look at this first illustrations. This part actually shows a skin of a normal people. So you can see that the bricks and mortar are arranged in the orderly manner in which there's no uh, gaps in between. As a result, the irritants from outside is hardly able to penetrate the skin and cause any inflammations or skin infections. As compared to uh, the other uh, illustrations, we can see that this wall is actually have a lot of uh, defects and a lot of gap in between this, uh, this wall. So if you see the uh, feature below, you can see that between this mortar, 
I mean, between these bricks, there's lack of mortar, which actually causing a lot of problems in which this irritant easily go through the gaps and go inside our skin. The other thing is that the moisture of the skin actually easily come out from the skin. As a result, people tend to get flare of eczema due to this. So when you uh, know this concept, it actually helps you to understand how can you actually prevent the flare of eczema. I think most of you might have a good guess now that the main treatment for eczema is actually filling the bricks, I mean, filling the gaps between the bricks with the mortar, which is the moisturizer. So if we put on all the moisturizer to fill in this gap, the irritant will actually hardly able to penetrate. And also it will actually maintain the moisturizer from losing from the skin. So very important. First tip is moisturizer, moisturizer and moisturizer. Okay. Let us go to uh, second tip. Second tip is actually uh, uh, what actually to identify what actually triggered the eczema. So uh, if we know that there's actually a lot of things that can trigger the eczema in our skin, uh, in our skin. So first commonly is actually skin infection, in which I'll discuss in detail in part two. So skin infections basically means uh, they can be bacterial, can be viral, it can be fungal cause that cause the infections. Of course, our hand itself actually can actually uh, precipitate more skin infections by scratching, scratching over the skin, whether it's face, over our limbs or body, it can actually precipitate more infections. Okay, so second part is actually irritants. Irritants is commonly is uh, harsh detergents. For example, body wash. Body wash, like commonly people like antiseptic wash, like Dettol, Lifebuoy, Antibax, Protex, all this. This is actually uh, marketed as an antiseptic wash. A lot of people think it's very good for their skin. In fact, for the eczema or sensitive skin patients, this is actually will dry up the skin even more and causing the flare of eczema, more so during this COVID-19 pandemic. Of course, uh, hand sanitizer is very important uh, trigger as well as most of them might contain 70% of alcohol and above. Some even contain other uh, chemicals, preservative, which can aggravate your eczema. So we should also try to identify this cause. Thirdly, is actually environment factor. Also very important factor, especially uh, for those with eczema, you, you, you should know that uh, hot weather, dusty area, and also like uh, changes in temperature, sudden change in temperature might cause all these problems. Not to forget about the aeroallergens like uh, pollens, uh, uh, more so in a house with a lot of molds, which is actually uh, due to like uh, poor ventilations in the room, in the house. And also not to forget about dust mite, which is also a very common uh, trigger, which triggered eczema. So for the dust mite, most of the time, uh, the dust mite, if you didn't wash your uh, bed sheets, your curtains, or the room was left unattended for a long duration or period of time, dust mite tends to uh, accumulate over this area and whenever you go to a dusty room, you might actually feel immediate itchiness of your skin. And uh, scratching, which I have discussed earlier, and also not to forget about the patient's factor, for example, pregnancy itself. Okay, so why is it so important we identify this thing is, once we identify, we need to not just using the moisturizer as we discussed in the tip one. The tip two actually identify and stop to use or reduce the usage of the trigger. If possible, try to avoid the trigger. So in this uh, COVID-19 pandemic era, uh, a lot of people actually come to see uh, dermatologists uh, because of hand eczema. This is actually one of the things that commonly happen. We can see that hand eczema commonly happen over the area that uh, you put hand sanitizer or you use very harsh soap. If you use all this hand sanitizer with uh, high alcohol and also other chemical contents and also uh, frequently use these detergents, you can actually cause this hand eczema. 
and this pen eczema. Uh, not to say that is not uh, uh, not to say that it is not important to use all this hand sanitizer and soap, but you need to use the correct soap and uh, correct hand sanitizer, which is friendly to our skin. Okay. So the third tip of managing eczema or preventions of eczema at home is actually the usage of topical steroids. I mean, if you have eczema, you know it's a lifelong disease. It may actually follow you for a few years and it may uh, come and goes wax and wane. And you need to know that topical steroids is actually your friend if you, you, if you know how to use it correctly. Of course, a lot of uh, patients even uh, especially for those uh, parents with kids with atopic dermatitis, they have this steroid phobia in which uh, the moment you talk about steroids, they will actually say, oh no, doctors, I don't want to use steroids. It's actually uh, a lot of side effects. Yes, steroid phobia is very real in nowadays, especially for those who understand what is actually uh, topical steroids. But as we can see here, topical used uh, I mean, topical steroids usage actually depends on many factors. We need to know each and every factors before we actually prescribe to patients and before patients can actually know how to use it at home effectively. So severity, site, potency of topical steroids, frequency of topical steroids, and is there any alternative to topical steroids? So severity basically means that uh, if you remember the photo just now, uh, severity of eczema basically means that if the patient presents to you with acute eczema with a very severe rash, most of the time you need to use potent steroids, topical steroids. As for the site, site basically means that different parts of body have different uh, absorption rate. For example, the best absorptions over our body is actually over our periorbital regions as well as scrotal or genital area as compared to our palm and sole in which the absorption is the worst because of the skin thickness. Okay, So that's why you need to understand this concept to know which topical steroids to use. And next, of course, is actually potency of topical steroids. Potency of topical steroids, in which I will discuss further, basically, uh, we actually divide it into weak steroids, moderate steroids, uh, potent steroids, and super potent steroids. By selecting the correct potency of steroids, it helps to uh, elevate the symptoms faster without causing any problems. Yes, some people uh, come to me, when they come to me, most of the time, they will uh, say that the doctors either prescribe with too weak the steroids, for example, hydrocord was prescribed to use over the pump for the hand eczema. It doesn't work. Also, some people actually was prescribed like Dermovic to use over the face, which is not correct also. So next is actually uh, frequency of topical steroids. Frequency of topical steroids basically means that when patients present with uh, acute eczema, no normally they will need to use the steroids like twice a day for five to seven days. After it improves, normally I will advise them to actually reduce to once a day for another five to seven days. And after that, depends on whether it is the area recurrence, I may suggest them to use a proactive treatment, meaning to prevent the flare of eczema if it's uh, the site keep on uh, flaring by putting this topical steroids two times weekly. Okay, of course, there's also steroids alternative in which I'm not going to discuss further, but uh, these are the options that you can use. Next is actually, uh, I will illustrate what is the potency of the topical steroids. So as we can see, mild, moderate, potent, very potent, and there's actually different preparations. You need to know each and every uh, one, which area to put on which topical steroids. For example, if it's mild, you can actually use this mild one over the face near the eye area, but not into the eye. You can use it over the scrotal area or uh, you can use over babies because their absorption of skin is uh, much better compared to the adults. 
Secondly, you, you can use actually moderate potency of topical stress. And most of the time, the most potent one, super potent one, clobetason propone, you actually only use in a skin area which is very thick, for example, your palm and so, as well as area in which the skin lesion is very, very thick. Okay. So next, I'm going to show you how the topical steroids actually works. So you can see, you need to understand how topical steroids works. You will see this picture, then you know that topical steroids can actually help to put off the fire of the inflammations of the eczema beneath your skin. Okay, that's why some people, when they feel, uh, some people or parents who have steroids phobia, they don't understand the usage of steroids. They, they, they thought the steroids is more like a, a temporary relief. Yes, it's a temporary relief. It's actually used to put off the inflammations so that if you let the fire keep on burning, it's very difficult to control the eczema, especially if the eczema is very, very acute and very, very bad. Without topical steroids, the fire is just going to keep on burning, keep on burning, without stopping. That's why some of our eczema doesn't improve because of steroids phobia. And secondly, you look at all these topical steroids. They have different name, generic name, uh, scientific name, and also they have different uh, vehicles. Vehicles means they can be ointment, they can be cream, they can be lotion, they can be gel form. All this actually uh, based on the site of applications and also patient's preference. But the, the key message here is to use the correct steroids at the correct place, at the correct dose and correct durations. Okay. Next, uh, the first part I would like to uh, emphasize again, take home message is actually moisturizer, 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 most important things you'll forget. This actually, if you forget, uh, moisturizer actually can help to prevent all those mild, able to revert the moderate eczema to uh, mild or even normal skin. And of course, don't forget to share this webinar because you may stand a chance to win a moisturizer in which is actually shown in this photo and is a goodies bag with uh, other moisturizer as well. Okay? So next, I'm going to proceed to the second part. Second part is actually uh, common skin infections. So why common skin infections? Uh, I would like to emphasize here is that uh, it's important for us to identify what actually caused the skin infections. I mean the cause. Why is it so? Because most of the time when you go to see doctors, uh, before you go to see doctors, you may just walk into the pharmacist and talk to the pharmacist, you show them, oh, I have this, what is this? Then they will, they, will, they, will, they will have a look, then they will tell you, oh, this is fungal infection. This is the medicines. So I hope with this uh, 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 sharing, I, I, I can at least help you to learn what is common skin infections that can commonly happen among uh, normal people as well as eczema patients. Eczema patients, as we, uh, discussed earlier, the, the skin infection is common and it can actually trigger. So uh, they have actually this uh, skin barrier defect they can get uh, easily get compared to a normal populations. So first part is actually bacterial infections, common bacterial infections. I bet some of you might have seen uh, all this, some of this picture before. So what is it? The first one is actually, when we see at this first one, it can commonly occur in uh, toddlers, babies, even in school-going children. When you see this, you will notice this uh, golden crusted uh, scales, commonly over the perioral area. It can happen near the nostril as well of the kids and also other parts of the body. It's actually common, uh, we call as a impetigo. So this skin infection is common and easily treatable if it's just the beginning of infection, which I'll discuss later on. So second 
which is quite common also, is actually what we uh, uh, describe as erysipelas. Basically, if you see clearly this photo, you can see is a well-demarcated redness over face area can happen over the limbs as well, in which is can sometimes uh, cause pain to the patients. It's actually well demarcated, meaning you can see this line is actually very well demarcated and very shiny, very angry looking. This is common bacterial skin infection by staph, uh, staphylococcus and also streptococcus. So third one, which is also very common, is actually what we call as folliculitis. Folliculitis basically means the inflammations of the follicles. If you look at here, you can see that all these small, small pustules actually have a hair coming up from these pustules. Basically, it's the inflammations of the hair follicle where the hair is growing out of our skin. Commonly, what can happen in this, uh, what can cause this is actually, for example, some people like to shave. They shave either wrong technique, too deep, or they didn't use a moisturizer to put on the area like uh, their legs or even the beard area, mustache area before they shave. As a result, it actually causes this folliculitis. Sometimes can be uh, quite extensive. You left it untreated, one of these folliculitis may further aggravate to become this frunco. Basically, it means a collection of folliculitis in which it coalesce to form a bigger collection of pus beneath the skin. Okay? So, this is common bacterial infection. So, when you have these skin infections, if you can uh, identify this, what you can do is actually uh, prevent it, in which I'll discuss later. But of course, when you have this, if you previously was given some topical medicine, you may start using it before you see a doctor. And most of the time, you can actually use a topical antibiotics, like a topical uh, fusidic cream, topical mupirocin cream, uh, before you actually seek treatment from the doctors. Okay, second one is actually viral infections. Also very common. First, very common one is actually herpes simplex. This can happen over any part of our body. And commonly, it can actually, uh, I think some of you might have this because uh, a cold sore. It happened over the perioral area in which it can actually present with this homogeneous, very look-alike vesicles. And when these lesions come up, you will feel intense pain. That's a classical sign. Very painful blister and all the blister and vesicle look about the same. And sometimes because it's too painful and too itchy, most of us tends to rub until it actually becomes eroded. So this vesicle might not be Present when you actually rub it. So in eczema patients also, they tend to have this we call it as an eczema hepaticum. Normally, they will present with uh, skin erosions over chronic scratch area, for example, over the extensive part for the younger babies or flexural part for the elder babies or toddler or even adults. Second, also quite common one is actually molluscum contagiosum. Molluscal contagiosum, basically, if you look at them, uh, they is actually very classical, umbilicated papules, meaning that there's, there's a, a, a depression in the center, and normally it easily spread. It can spread from one kid to another kid. It's common among the kindergarten nursery kids because they play around, they like to scratch. Whenever they scratch the lesion and uh, touch other kids, or touch their own skin, it may actually spread and causing uh, more, more and more of the lesions. So if you identify this, better seek treatment early. Next one is herpes zoster. Herpes zoster also quite common. Uh, sometimes uh, it's more commonly uh, occurred in an immunosuppressed uh, adults or even teenagers. Basically, they will present like this. One side of your body Parts, normally one side means either right side or left side. Normally, they will follow what we call as dermatome. Basically, means that 
uh, area innovations by uh, nerve because the virus stay uh, latent in the nerve uh, ganglion. And when you are stressful, your body is stressful, the immunity is low, the virus may be activated and it causes this skin lesions over one sided of your body. And the skin lesions normally is vesicles, blisters with fluid, and most of the time it's actually painful. Okay? So when you have this, don't rub, don't prick the vesicles. You may get bacterial infections, secondary bacterial infections. Get treatment early. Okay? Last for the viral infection is actually viral wart. You look at here, viral wart is actually very common. A lot of my patients actually have this. It can appear any parts of your body as well. And for this, normally you will see either a very falciform or very warty lesions or your hand, your finger, your soul. It actually commonly happens. You look under a scope or you look closer or you can use your... Uh, handphone to use a micro a magnifying uh, lens to actually have a look you might see some black black dots with red dots or even white dots all those is actually shows that is a viral wart so all this viral wart is very common and uh, you should never try to clip it yourself causing bleeding because sometimes when you clip it, you didn't sterilize it properly. It might spread to other areas because for example, I always have a patients with like a wart over their leg, sole area. They step on something, they don't wash their legs, use their hand to scratch their legs and scratch over their face, scratch their body. At the end of the day, they get these viral warts all over their body. Okay? So try to avoid scratching it. Try to get help from doctors as early as possible. Next, I'm going to talk about common fungal infections. So I bet most of you, if you're parents, you might have seen the first photo before. It's very common if you put your babies or toddler on diapers for long durations, or especially if they're having diarrhea, you didn't change the diapers uh, fast enough, you may actually end up having this uh, very uh, angry looking uh, redness rash over the perineum area, meaning their private part. If you look clearly, you may see this small, small satellite uh, papule with tiny little pustules there. It's actually what we call as a candidacid. It's a type of a cutaneous fungal infection. It's very common. And it can actually happen in adults, especially all those adults which, uh, uh, which is obese, have a, a lot of folded area, like a folded abdomen, folded uh, uh, private part because of their big belly is actually covering. And beneath their breasts also, it can actually commonly happen. So if you identify this, you should actually, you can actually at home, you can actually treat yourself by using, uh, prevent it by using soap. Normally, it's an antifungal soap. But for no, a baby, normally, uh, for diaper areas, I would actually just advise to just frequently change the diapers. Make sure the private part is always dry and clean. Okay? Some people might use, uh, for example, some powder, antifungal powder to put on this diaper areas. Of course, it's inflamed like shown in this photo. You actually need to put on medicines, topical medicines like um, topical fungal cream to actually reduce the inflammations here. If it's too red, sometimes we may add in some topical steroids, very weak one to actually help to reduce the symptoms so that uh, this area will feel much better, won't be that itchy. Second common uh, fungal infection is actually tinea capitis. Why I share this? Because I notice a lot of parents, when they notice this, they, they actually uh, try to seek treatment from uh, over-the-counter medicine or even treat themselves by buying the medicines themselves. But what I want to say here is tinea capitis, a fungal infection over the scalp, most of the time, a topical antifungal doesn't work as as well as a systemic, meaning oral medicines. 
Why is it so? Because it's actually go deeper into our hair follicles and causing inflammations. If we leave it untreated, it can actually cause scarring of the scalp. And at the end of the day, if it start to form scar, you might actually have a ball area permanently. So don't wait, seek treatment fast and early. Okay? So they can present with, uh, for example, like this, one bogginess with a lot of uh, crusting over the scalp. Some may just have like one patch of hair loss with a lot of black, 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 patch, uh, black dots or gray patch over this area. Some will just have like a small, small pustules. You see pustules most of the time in uh, school going children or toddler is actually uh, if they have like play with cats and dogs, most of the time is actually a tinea capitis. If you're unsure, seek treatment from doctors. Okay, all right. Next is actually tinea corporis or any other uh, dermatophyte infections, fungal infection over our superficial skin. It can happen any parts of our body, body, face, even the nails, and also other areas like a private part. So commonly you'll see this uh, is a, what we call a center clearing, means at the time go by, you actually slowly spread from center to the edge. And the edge normally is like this, very red and very scaly. So it's like very scaly and you scrape it for fungal, uh, send to the lab, you can actually grow some fungal. Okay, this is actually preventable, easily identifiable. So whenever you see this, try to get treatment early because it's very easy to treat. Not to forget about this tinea pedis, uh, especially for those uh, uh, adults with actually deformed of their uh, toe. Because most of the time, if you have like a bony configurations problem of your toe, all the uh, toe will actually arrange so tight or those uh, who like to wear very narrow boxed shoes, they can actually form this very, how to say, all this toe is actually very approximate, very closely. This is how this encourages the fungus to grow. Normally you'll see this, what we call as a macerated area, very white, whitish, may have some uh, fluid discharge here, over the web space, either over your hand or even over your legs. It's very common, especially for those with uh, uh, eczema over the leg, stasis eczema, or very edematous leg as well. You need to open up your web space, look at the web space, and treatment very easy. Try to open up. You can use some toe web spacer to open up. You can actually put some medicine, topical antifungal over this area to dry it up. And of course, uh, wear, wear a proper shoe wear to actually prevent it from happening. So next, I will also discuss about some of the common uh, atropoid bites on bites. Why is it so? Because uh, this is so common that it you can actually easily encounter whenever you go outside of your house. For, ever, for example, first one, bee sting, normally you'll see one punctum at the center. Okay, so when you have, uh, I mean, most of the time you will, you will notice a bee actually come near you and sting you. But if you don't realize it, most of the time you try to look for the punctum. Some may actually worsen with all what we call as a urticaria or hive. Okay, so when you have this, you just need symptomatic treatment. Okay, next one is actually roof beetle. I think uh, for those staying in northern area like Kedah, Perlis, Penang, have encountered these bugs, very, uh, uh, what we say as an unfriendly bugs. Some people call them as Charlie, uh, Charlie, Charlie bugs, char uh, roof beaters. So when you have these bugs actually crawling on your skin, first instinct of you or normal people will actually go and scratch and remove it. So whenever you scratch and remove it, all the chemicals on the body of the bugs will actually spread around and cause these inflammations. So you can see this bizarre looking, normally is a very like following the line of a rubbing or scratching of your uh, skin. 
and they might have all these small, small crust, even some pastilles, and most of the time, you will feel very stinging, burning, and you just need to, whenever you saw this bug, first thing to do is actually try to remove it without rubbing your skin. Then next thing, go quickly to wash the area with uh, running tap water and some soap. And if it's still red, then you may need to put on some moisturizer and topical steroids to reduce the inflammation. Okay, this is actually very common. A lot of my patients encounter this. They, some, some even have more than one, it means over the face, over the scalp, over, all over the body, especially during this uh, paddy field harvesting season. Next is actually mosquito bites, uh, especially easily to identify over the skin area, especially for babies, because uh, it's so, so easily seen. Normally, they will just present with small papule urticaria or hive or wheels over the bite area. And normally, it's very itchy and very uh, easy to treat. You can just use a topical moisturizer with topi mild topical steroids and take maybe some antihistamines if the kids is big enough. Otherwise, you leave it untreated, it may actually resolve by itself as well. But of course, well, what we worry about mosquito bite is the viruses carried by them, like dengue, chikukunya, things like that. Okay, so uh, next is actually very common, scabies. I actually have uh, encountered several very difficult to treat eczema patients. When I ask further history, normally they will tell you uh, they may have encountered some other kids with very itchy skin rashes or they are coming from a hostel, staying in a hostel school, boarding school, things like that, in which uh, the roommate having similar problems, kindergartens. In adults, it can have happen in a nursery, uh, I mean, uh, uh, nursery rooms, not nursery room. It's old folks house. Nurse, uh, all these uh, adult el elderly care centers. So most of the time, what you need to see is over the web spaces. They may have small small papules, vesicles. Sometimes may have some small small tract in between. Other area commonly happen is actually over this uh, wrist area, over their nipple area, axilla area, and a private part over their scrotum genital area, very, very common, even over the web space of their toe. So when you have difficult to treat eczema, you may need to look into this area because sometimes the, the, the eczema is so bad that sometimes you actually master uh, scabies infections. In Malay, we call kudis kudis. Okay? Next is actually bed bugs. Normally, bed bugs happen in the when you go to a new place, new hotel, new hostel to stay, in which the bed was left unused for a long time, and then actually all these small, small bugs running around beneath the mattresses. So whenever you sleep, then they will start to come out, creep on your skin, and cause this classical. You can see this classical three dots here. We say is a breakfast lunch and dinner okay breakfast lunch and dinner well, uh, but you you may miss it uh, because sometimes they have so many uh, rash but when you look at these three dots three dots here you may need to think of whether you have sit on any beds sofa uh, or chair which is left there for long duration of time you may have this big bugs okay and last but not least uh, headlines is also very common among the com uh, I mean school going children. They might have this uh, headlines affecting their skin and the scalp. If it doesn't look uh, close enough, you might just think, oh, this is dandruff. You leave it untreated, it will actually affect you, not just affect you, you may uh, af affect the patients, it might affect the people stay, uh, staying together or sharing the uh, leniences, uh, formites. So we should always identify this. We have a lot of dandruff. Try to look closer. Whether the dandruff is moving or not. If it's moving, you may actually uh, have this headlines. Okay? So why I share with you all this photo is that so that this common uh, skin infection or common 
common bacteria, uh, parasitic or bugs infestation of the skin. So you have all these clinical signs. If you know how to treat, you can treat first before you seek uh, any professional uh, treatment. But uh, uh, at least you have a guidance what actually uh, to use, what to look for. Especially when you go to pharmacies, you know what to buy. Uh, if you know what is it, like, if you don't know what is it, better seek uh, professional tr uh, treatment from doctors. Okay, so next I'm going to discuss tip, the three tips to actually prevent these skin infections. First of all, protections. Protection means what? Means avoid injury, avoid, uh, keep the area clean. For example, like eczema, just keep on putting moisturizer over the area so that you won't get infected. Over the perineum area for babies, keep on changing the diapers. Over the web spaces, most of the time, keep it dry. And also, even for the toe, try to avoid wearing the narrow shoes and also try to make sure all the web space is actually open up. Second, very important is actually avoidance. Avoidance means avoid. For example, for insects, you can use mosquito repellent, insects repellent before you go to outdoor activities, jogging, gardening, things like that. And also avoid contact with those with like skin lesions. For example, in nursery, there are other kids who complain itchy skin rashes. What do you need to tell your kids? Run away! Okay, but you need to tell the parents to actually uh, either get professional treatment from the doctors or not. This certain skin uh, or bug infections can actually easily spread, like scabies, head lines can easily spread, okay? Even like viruses, in, uh, infections like uh, molluscum contagiosum is easily spread, okay? Lastly, the third one is actually early detection, which I tried to share with you just now, early detect of the skin lesions so that they will actually have uh, early, uh, early treatment, early prevention, Okay, all right. So there's uh, whole pharma and Taiso pharmaceuticals groups, uh, uh, CME disclaimer, disclaimers. And lastly, any questions? Okay. Hope you all uh, enjoyed the talk. Not, uh, not to forget to share and also to comment or ask any questions. And you want to win some goodies back, uh, please, please make sure you share and ask some questions. You might get all this moisturizer. Okay. Yeah. Hi, doctor. There's a question there from, uh, let me have a look. Uh, there's a question in Facebook from, from Cat Tum. On cat thumb. So he, I think he's a, he's a male. He asked me, uh, can eczema can be fully cured? Okay, eczema, most of the time, uh, we, we say that it's actually uh, come and goes wax and wait. Meaning, let's say in uh, babies, normally uh, they, they will have eczema when they start to uh, expose to the environment or start uh, drinking milks, have a lot of saliva, they won't present at birth. So after a few months, they will actually start to have uh, eczema over the face area like this. But uh, if we identify the cause, in which we discussed earlier, identify the cause, keep on the moisturizer on the area or the skin, it can actually early resolutions of the eczema. Of course, uh, if you're exposed to all the triggers which I discussed earlier, it might actually flare again. So to say an uh, eczema can fully cure, uh, not really, we can actually control the eczema to a uh, status of like a clear skin, like a normal skin, but uh, whenever you're exposed to the trigger, it may actually flare again. So it's actually controllable rather than curable. Okay, hope I, I see. Questions. Yeah, there's another question from Li Hong Chang. So he, he is asking how to differentiate fungal and rashes and or inflammation. 
uh, how to differentiate fungal and Re uh, fungal and rashes or inflammation. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, I just go back to some of the slides. Okay. Uh, let's say you are talking about how to differentiate uh, uh, skin rash with fungal infections. Of course, uh, first thing, for example, we're talking about eczema patients. We look at this rash is actually very dry, scaly. And for fungal infections, let's say previously some patient actually put on some antiseptic wash or antifungal cream, it may actually present like this. Meaning, if you doesn't seek any treatment before you actually apply any medicines, this can be just a simple eczema. But bear in mind, for eczema patients, they have a skin barrier defect. So whenever they have a skin barrier defect, the, the fungal infection can uh, easily happen. So how to differentiate them, for example, uh, uh, over this palm area, if it have a classical red rashes with uh, center clearing and the edge is very scaly, as we show in the photo just now, it can be actually concomitant fungal infection, meaning and eczema patients may have a concomitant fungal infection which trigger it. Okay, for example, you look at this palm. You have this palm, one side only. You have, uh, let's say you have a hand eczema, but let's say you keep on moisturizing the hand, but one day you only have one palm which is like this rash. So this can actually, uh, meaning that you have a possible have a hand eczema, which actually triggered by a fungal infections of the hand. So not to say it can be easily uh, different shape, but from the side, from the progression, you may actually help. Okay, but if you're not sure, better get help or expert treatment from the doctors. All right, thank you. And then from Farah Aina, so she asked, uh, she asking what type of moisture Moisturizer is the best. Okay. Uh, moisturizer, I think when you go to pharmacy, uh, there's a lot of range. Uh, of course, what moisturizer is the best is actually the moisturizer that you want to use over your skin is the best. You will get the best moisturizer with the best ingredient, but you didn't use it. Is it a good moisturizer? No, it isn't. So moisturizer means... Good moisturizer, best moisturizer means the moisturizer that you like to use and use it frequently. Of course, moisturizer have a lot of types. You go to pharmacy, there's actually moisturizer formulated by a, a pharmaceutical company. There's actually uh, some moisturizer actually uh, just uh, formulated by some, uh, some, some, some factories. So how to know is actually by looking at the ingredient meaning certain ingredients like uh, ceramide, free fatty acids, glycerin, uh, humectants, and also like uh, lincocalcone. All this actually is the active ingredient which can actually help to reduce the inflammations. Okay, for example, uh, today, uh, if you look at this, you look at the ingredient box, they actually right there, there's actually uh, the ingredient contain like uh, uh, dimetic corn, all those... Uh, Saccharide isomerase, saccharide isomerase. Those are the ingredients that can help. Of course, moisturizer also have cream, lotions, ointment. You need to know which one you like to use most, which vehicles. You like cream more, lotion more, or ointment more. Let's say you have a wound, you put on the cream, you might feel stinging and pain. Then you don't want to use the moisturizer. So to answer your question is that there's, there's no best moisturizer in the market. The best moisturizer is the best moisturizer is the moisturizer that you want to use uh, most of the time over your skin that you like to use it. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and then another one from Moon Yen Yong. So, uh, can we apply moisturizer on newborn baby as a way to prevent eczema if the baby tend to have eczema family history? Okay, uh, actually, there is actually study to prove that uh, there is actually. Uh, uh, how to say, uh, proactive usage of moisturizer over the uh, babies can actually help to prevent the eczema. So there's numerous latest studies actually uh, prove that. But of course, you need to uh, know that uh, for a baby to develop eczema, most of the time they have like a family history of uh, we call it as allergy or atopy, meaning uh, family members with like allergic 
conjunctivitis, allergic nose, uh, allergic rhinitis, eczema, bronchial asthma, urticaria. They tend to have a higher risk compared to a normal population. So you can just put a moisturizer is to the baby. It can actually help to protect the skin and prevent the skin from getting inflamed. And it's actually uh, scientifically proven. Okay, so I see Farah here. She asking, uh, what ingredients should a good moisturizer have? I think the doctor had just said just now, right? And uh, another one is it safe to continuously applying uh Fusi cord on my three years old son whenever he got a bite? Fusi cord, eh? Fusi cord, okay. Okay, Fusicot, if you look at the medicine and also the label, um, most of the time Fusicot, the cot basically means there's a steroids contained. If it's a, 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 a antibiotic cream per se, normally it will be like Fusicot cream or Forbite cream. So when there's a steroids, there's always a fear that the steroids may actually uh, cause side effect if you prolong use it. And of course, uh, let's say we're using topical antibiotic over the infected area or wound area, it actually helps to heal the wound and uh, prevent the infections. I won't really recommend the prolonged and chronic use of the forbine cord or fussy cord over the skin, okay? Moisturizer is more important than the forbine cord. Sometimes you like, uh, people like to use uh, this forbine cord or fussy cord or the antibiotic cream with and, uh, steroids is that, it actually helped to reduce the inflammations as well. They thought uh, it's the antibiotic helping the inflammation. It's actually the steroids helping the inflammations to resolve. So no, Fusicot shouldn't be used for long. All right. And then Kat, so she asked me, Bagan especially have IgE allergy tests for adult? Yes, we can send, it's a blood test and we can send the blood to actually check it um yep but uh, most of the time for adults it may not really helpful uh if you are thinking that you might have a food allergy most of the time this ige test is more for uh, young babies or young toddler in which they start eating they might have food allergy that is the case that it, it will be most helpful all right and uh, maybe we have give uh, give the viewer a minute to to throw us a, a few more questions. So uh, with, uh, while waiting, I can I want to repeat another thing is uh, please share this uh, video this live, and then we'll be giving out five uh, goodie bags, which include uh, this one. I can uh, show you guys. This is moisturizer, yeah. And then there's a. Tupperware from Bagan Specialist. And then we still have uh, this one, this one right here, and, and this cream right here. So these goodie bags will include this, uh, these things, which is uh, this all that I show is in one goodie bag. So we'll be, uh, we'll be giving out five of the goodie bags for whoever share this video. To their Facebook wall. Okay, and the result will be announced on Tuesday, which is uh, 11 of August. So please help us to share this video uh, to as more friends as you can. Okay, so uh, let me see if they have any question. Okay, yeah, I don't see any new question in the Facebook column. So maybe that's it for our today's live talk. And we thank uh, Dr. Lo, uh, Dr. Lo for his wonderful presentation for our, for today. Yeah, so thank you everybody who, uh, yeah, spend your, uh, take your time to, to, to view this uh, live event, to attend this live event. And maybe we will uh, end here today. Yeah, thank you, doctor. And thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, yeah.